All right, guys, from where we stopped, we need to um, create, we need to make the list of uh, users look cool. Uh, but before then, let us uh, see that we make, uh, this page will be reserved for admin, by the way. But let's, uh, let's see to it that we make the create page, the new job uh, creation page uh, unique. All right, now in the past video, we worked on some fields that we got wrong initially, but um, it's all good because we fixed the main things. So the first of all thing we want to change here is the user ID field. It should be automatically filled. All right, so we are going to go to where it is. Inside views folder, we are going to click on fields and we see that the first field here is user ID. We don't need it. We're going to hide it. All right, now we've hidden it. It means that uh, we need to have a way, let's refresh first, you will see that it is gone. So we need to have a way of automatically attaching the user ID to any job uh, that is created. Alright, so the way we're going to do it is simple. Uh, the simple way is to go to the controller, because whenever this form is submitted, uh, it carries the contents into your app folder. So somebody submits a form here inside the resources views job fields somebody submits a form there and then it carries the contents into your app folder http controllers job controller you see this is where the contents end up so now we have the contents here uh if if the person is creating a new a new content this is the page that displays that page this is the function that displays the jobs create page. Look at this function displays this page. Look at it, jobs create. You see? So this function inside the jobs controller displays the page. But when somebody clicks on submit, this is the function that saves the content. So if somebody clicks on submit here, it says save. So it submits the content to this function. This function uh, retrieves, this line retrieves all the contents from the form. And then you see it creates the new record after creating it it gives you the message uh, job saved successfully so I can just say job uh, created successfully and then it redirects it to another page the index page which is where we saw the job we created okay so what we're gonna do is right here we're going to automatically insert the user ID and there is a way in Laravel to get the currently logged in user ID and that way is to assess the session. In Laravel you access the session using auth and then you say auth user. So with this arrow you can now access any field. So we're going to say auth user ID. This is the ID of the currently logged in user. Okay. So in Laravel we're going to simply say Remember that this is an array. We're saving all the contents here into the input field. So we can say uh, input field for user underscore ID should be equal to this. See? Then we'll put a semicolon. So we just created another element inside this input field array and we set it to user ID and we set it to this variable. Now the thing is that we need to import auth in any page you are coding in a controller you must always import any new uh, uh anything you want to use so here we're just going to say use auth so this imports the auth um, i think this is a facade all right so we're good we're good so anytime somebody submits a uh anybody submits a field now a form once the form wants to save it to first of all save the, the user um, details uh, it will add the user details to the field the um, array before attempting to save it okay cool now also instead of redirecting to the list of all jobs we should redirect to the actual job that was just created and the way to do that is to say we are redirecting to jobs slash uh, show so inside the show we're going to um, do I think um, this is the way to do that um, I think the better way to do that is the way it was done here look at this so 
So this is the function we're trying to redirect to. But uh, we could just simply say, uh, let's copy exactly what's here. Well, I think it's much better this way. So what we're going to do is we're redirecting to this function and this function accepts only ID. So we're going to say redirect to jobs dot show. All right. And then the ID that you're going to work with is going to be the this ID. And that ID is um, the ID of the newly created job. So we're going to say job ID. Okay, so um, this job was created. We can access its ID, then we pass it into the redirect. So it redirects to this function. This function displays to us the currently uh, logged in, uh, the currently created job. Now, uh, before we test it, I want us to fix some other fields. So we have this already. We have skills required. We have um, work type, status, call. We have organization ID. Now this is supposed to be a drop down. We're coming to that, and for country is supposed to be a drop down too. So let's test it out. Let's say summary and conclusion job, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. Skills required, PST, HTML, CSS. We look at a remote, full time, status. Say on, organization ID. Let's say one, and then country ID. Let's say forty five. Click save. So it's creating itself. Maybe you can't see it, but I can see that there's a spinner here already. And now we're in the new page. For some reason, the user ID is invalid. So why is the user ID field is required? Okay, so our user ID field is missing. And the reason it's throwing that error is simple. If we you see that the user ID field is required, okay? So if we go to our model, we'll see that there is a place, look at it, in the app folder, we'll go to model, job. We will see that there's a place, look at it at the bottom here, at the bottom of the jobs file, there's a place we specify that user ID is required, which means it must be filled. You see, it must be filled. So if we delete this and uh, try again, let's see how it goes. Click save. It's re rotating. So um, as you can see, it tried to redirect, but the redirection did not work because somehow our code was wrong. But at the end of the day, it, sh it um, redirected to the main view instead of the actual uh, job that was created so if you look now you will see that um, we have two fields here so before I go back and fix this I want the redirection to end up in the job the actual job that was created if we go back a little on the job create page maybe you can click here you will see that here there is a save and cancel I want to remove the cancel we don't need it all right um, just for uh, not to confuse the user so um, to fix that, you will have to understand something. The way this InfoAM handles stuff. So let's go to resources. We'll go to views. And let's look at jobs. Now, uh, if we look at this file, create blade. So this file contains uh, the rest of the content, the job. But then the list of fields, this is the, the, the page. This is the HTML page to create list of jobs, okay? Which is the page that shows this. Now, this page you're seeing stopped here. The rest of the, the form you're seeing, the rest of this form you're seeing here, is not showing on this page. Look at it. So, this form is included with just one single line. This line you're seeing here. This line you're seeing here contains the whole field. So this whole form field you're seeing here is being imported from another file. So this page is basically a skeleton, a framework or a template for that contains all this whole thing. All right. Even this error you're seeing here, this red error, look at it here. See, include admin LTE templates common error, you see. 
So this this jobs dot field, it's a file. Look at it. Okay, so the same thing with edit.blade. If you look at edit.blade, you will see that it contains the same thing, the list of common errors. And then it imported this file. Now the difference between the edit page and the create page is just this one line. This one line is the, the top of the form. You know, normally in HTML, you would do something like this form. You do form. Okay, to create a form and then you end it with a form. All right then inside the form you do something like form action right you do action then you do method this is basically how to create a form in html it's also the same way to create it in laravel look at how laravel creates it form model points to job and the route this is the route this this route serves like the the action form action okay and then the method is patch you see so let's look at the create page if we look at the create page we see that it says form open route job store so this one just creates the form uh, creates the, the the data while this one edits it so remember that one key thing in the edit is that it has to say which particular job it's editing that's why you have this route so that's just the difference. The rest of the field is the same file. It's, see, both of them are pointing to the same jobs.field file. So if you come here, which is, this is this file. So the create and the edit page are both pointing to the same file. Okay, well, so we're good. Uh, let's see if we have to remove what we just used here. Remove it. So where we just need to fix something is in the jobs controller. So if you go to app uh, HTTP controllers, job controller, right here, we're trying to redirect. We tried to redirect to this route file. So we did it wrongly. That's why it's passed like this. So if you read the Laravel documentation on routing, you'll see so many ways uh, you can write this kind of uh, routing code. But uh, let's see the next way. Let's try the next way. So the next way is to do with with id and then uh, comma id so we're redirecting to this with this okay so let's go check it out so we come here one more time we have all these i'll just put two here and uh, everything is okay we'll click save So guys, uh, the problem we had was a slight change in the way that Laravel 6 handles routing. All right, in Laravel 5, you're just going to have to tell it the name of the parameter that you're working with. For instance, jobs.show, uh, we're going to do in Laravel 5, we did something like this. You see, we're going to tell it that... Um, we're working with the ID here, you see, this ID, that's the name of the parameter. But in Laravel 6, you don't need to tell it this. If you tell it this, you keep running into problems like we just did. So you don't need to tell it the name of the route you're working with. So it's uh, so it's counting the first one. So if there was another route in here, let's say user ID. So user ID, let's say there is another route parameter here called user ID, right? What we're going to do here is we do just do a comma and we do job user underscore id. So I hope you get now how it works in Laravel 6. So the whole thing has to be in, in the same order and you're good. All right. Unlike in Laravel 5 where we have to tell it which of the parameters we're referring to. So if you want to read more about routing, which I advise that you pause this video and just glance through the official Laravel routing page, uh, just go to the official Laravel and uh, click on um, the basics. So if you click on the basic, you see that the first option there is routing. It brings you to this page. So in this page, just uh, scroll and glance through so that you can uh, see all the options that Laravel provides with um, routing. Okay, 
so then uh, you will be able to understand how I did what I did okay so we'll still do more on routing when we get to our routing files and stuff like that but one thing you have to no notice is that uh, let's say if we go to if we search this page for redirect not redirect but route okay you see that um, there is a way Laravel 6 handles redirect okay so it puts the redirect function outside and uh, then uh, chains in the route unlike in Laravel 5 which puts the whole routing thing inside so uh, if I did the same thing it will still work if I copied everything here and pasted it here this is how Laravel 5 handles it it will still work okay so um, just to test and confirm that it works so this is our page so I'm gonna do one random stuff let's say AI developer with um, AI developer so we're looking for an AI developer that has a react.js a background okay now if we click save it's reloading uh, we had it almost worked but there is an error somewhere okay so here you see we have two parameters that was the error i i made a mistake of not deleting it when i after showing you the example i delete this delete this only one parameter then i'll delete this so this is how yours should uh, look by default uh, so here if we reload this page now you'll see that um, it simply worked what we did worked so that's how uh, routes, if you're coming from Laravel 5, you should just know the slight little difference. And then if you're using Laravel for the first time, just pause this video, glance through this uh, Laravel documentation page, and you'll be glad you did, all right? Even if you don't understand um, um, more than 20% of what's on this page, it's okay, just glance through. All right, guys, see you in the next video.